So do you know how approximately? We are live one? now. A great evening to one and all, and a hearty welcome to all my friends on behalf of School Skies and Kaveri Hospitals. This is Dr. Pramila Jagdish, nodal physician and founder of School Skies, and pleasure to be your host for the day. So, friends, let's not forget of all the things that we wear. A posture is one of the most important things. So, agreed. I'm sure I have your unanimous vote on this. Uh, the crux of things may be not just that a posture is much more than just making a good impression. It's about a healthy, happy lifestyle in total. And we've all heard the standard sentence, stand up, sit up, chin up. And we love telling this to our kids. So to talk a little bit more about the good and the bad of posture, we have Dr. G. Balmurli from Kaveri Hospital here with us. For a brief intro, Kaveri Hospital is a multi-speciality hospital with multiple branches across India with a vision to provide quality health care to the common man. As for schools, guys, it's concerned. We have a vision to take schools online and also empower every student to achieve more. Not just that, we also believing in addressing the concerns that the students undergo when they take the online journey, be it in healthcare or be it in technology. So in short, this is a joint endeavor to create health awareness among the school and the education community. So with that, uh, I take the pleasure of introducing our guest speaker for the day, Dr. G. Balamurli. He is the head of spine and neurosurgery Kaveri Hospital. He's the managing director at Thamsa Spine and Brain Rehab Center, Chennai. He is an internationally trained spinal neurosurgeon with 20 years of surgical experience across four countries, an avid academician, researcher, and he's received several awards. Some to mention would be Dr. ABJ Abdul Kalam Award for Best Contribution to Society and Best Doctor Award from the Government of Tamil Nadu. He is also an avid trekker, artist and traveler. Uh, sure, Doc, this is quite an awe-inspiring uh, CV, I would say, and I'll definitely tag along with you when you go for your trek next time, probably. And uh, we love to hear your insight and the stage is all yours. Over to Dr. G. Balmurli. Yes. Um, hello. Uh, good evening, viewers. Um, as uh, Dr. Praveena had mentioned, I'm Dr. Bal Murli. I'm a spine and neurosurgeon. Um, I'm going to first uh, take this opportunity to uh, show you a short presentation for about 10 to 12 minutes, where I'm going to explain to you what we're going to talk about actually today, the posture of children. Um, so for this, you need to understand some basics about the spine, the problems that can happen in the spine, how you can manage it, what are the wrong things and the right things to do? How do you correct them? And what are the treatments available? And then we'll go on to a lot of questions. So if you are really attentive, a lot of your questions are going to be answered in this presentation itself. Um, but hopefully we can go through them again because we have an hour and it's very important because I have kids as well. My kids are also on online classes and I'm saying exactly the same words that you are saying to your kids. So um, without much uh, delay, let me talk to you about how to save your child's posture. Um, well, the most important thing about posture is, uh, you know, everybody has to consciously be aware of their posture. That's the most important thing. Um, you know, there's a lot of questions about, you know, I have a hump, uh, my child sways to one side, my child bends to one side. Um, a lot of these uh, things I'm going to talk to you is not just only for kids because I'm sure the group here is mostly parents, but it's also for adults as well. Um, so it, the same information goes to them as well. So if you look at uh, the human body, you know, we made of skeleton and then the skeleton is covered with muscles. Remember, we are not standing because we have strong bones. We are standing because our muscles are strong and the posture is maintained by the muscles and not the bone. So people think that, you know, as you grow older, you know, the muscles become weak, so they swing forwards and they have, you know, a, a wrong posture bending forwards. It's not because of the bone. It's because as you grow older, our activity reduces, our muscles are not active. And so that's what we have that wrong posture. So if your spine is active in your young, it's going to become strong and it's going to be healthy as you grow older. So you have to get these habits right at the young age in school. Uh, so uh, the spine consists of four different parts. It has a curvature. Remember, the spine is not a straight bone. So you, you have to notice that if somebody's back is straight or neck is straight, that means it's not wrong. It's not right. 
the spine should have bends. Uh, if you look at this, uh, you know, the bricks on the left hand side, if the bricks are not aligned properly and if they are all haphazard, you can imagine that the center of gravity is not going to be correct. So the same way, if the spine is not aligned and the curve is not maintained, we're going to develop problems. And the problems start with the, the back problems are very complex. The reason I'm going to combine back and neck pain and posture is they're all interrelated. So the once somebody develops a pain, they attain a wrong posture. Once somebody has weak bones, they attain a wrong posture. Once somebody has weak muscles, they'll attain a wrong posture. So the problem is very complex. It's not just at one place. The spine has disc, bones, nerves, um, and so many other ligaments and muscles attached to it. And then right in the middle of this is the spinal cord. So I'm going to show you this short video. Which mm -hmm. Can you hear this video? Sorry, just one second. I think we can't have the audio doc. Uh, OK, OK, just a minute. Back Can you hear now? Problems or the second yes, common go ahead. Of yeah. hospital visits worldwide after common cold. It is estimated that 8 out of 10 people suffer from an episode of pain. 90% of back and neck pain is not serious. People visit doctors, physiotherapists, yoga specialists, Ayurvedic massages, acupuncture therapists, native treatments, and rely on tablets, belts, and braces, and much more. Stress and depression are an outcome of chronic back and neck pain, which can be very difficult to manage. There are several myths that people have for managing pain. Should you be active or take rest? Sleep on floor or special bed? Wear collar or belt? Avoid a head pillow? Avoid driving? Refrain from exercise? Everyone has a different answer. Do you know what is serious and not so serious pain? Do you know when and where to seek help? Do you think your life is crippled due to your pain? A team of eminent doctors, therapists in physio, yoga and acupuncture will suggest you ways to have a healthy spine and untangle all your beliefs. So if you look at uh the, the message there is that eight out of 10 people when you get older are going to develop back pain. And if you have a healthy life before you are 16, the chances of you developing back pain before 40 to 50 are much less. So children really need to change their way of life and their lifestyle in order to prevent back pain occurring very early. Common causes are injury by pushing, pulling, twisting, all the household course that we do, repetitive work, you know, injury at work, sitting in the wrong posture, standing in the wrong position, lifting, and all these wrong positions that we attain, you know, kids go into so many wrong positions, lying in bed and watching television, lying in the, um, and, and watching their computer, mobile phones, tabs, stress. Stress is a very important factor. Kids are even more stressed these days, and I'm sure I've seen that you had a series of talks about managing stress in children. Stress leads to back pain and back problems. Now, I'm sure you are all concerned about your kids carrying school bags. Uh, we will discuss about this later, but school bags can cause problems. And there's been a study that was done in Scandinavia, which found that 51% of school children suffered from back pain. Significant risk factors are age, gender, amount of time spent in front of the TV and involvement in competitive sports. So again, we'll discuss about this later. Girls, mainly young teenage girls, you know, when they start carrying heavy bags and wearing high heels, they're also going to develop a lot of back problems. So what is sitting due to your spine? So this is what we are mainly concerned about in this current generation of a new way of home schooling, which is online schooling. So what does it do? Sitting, I mean here, is sitting continuously for three to four hours, a sedentary lifestyle, lack of exercise, lack of motivation, and spending a lot of on-screen time. I'm sure you all heard about this term called sitting is equal to smoking. 
so you know smoking is banned and in so many workplaces public places because we know the harm effects of smoking but now they say that the current dangerous thing is sitting which is as bad or worse than smoking it can cause all kinds of problems like obesity diabetes heart attacks cancer um, spine problems and so many other things so the complications of wrong posture are you can get either neck pain back pain you can get pain in your eyes inflammation you can get stomach aches because of constipation and lack of movement of your bowel obesity obesity leading to diabetes um and you know overall children become very lethargic and headaches due to computer and screen timing so the correct posture is as you can see here standing erect so standing straight with your shoulders splayed outside and your neck looking straight forward so this is the right posture so these things can only be depicted on this picture right now but you know if you come if your child wants any demonstration we have some videos which we can share uh, to people who require it sitting again you should not slouch and sit down or sit very straight you need to sit where your back is arched the the spine needs to maintain those arches so again sitting in front of a computer you cannot have a rounded back your back should be straight so there are so many things that i give a lot of talks to companies about sitting posture in front of a computer but you have to remember if you look at this picture here you need to have your knees and your thigh parallel to the floor and your spine is vertical and your computer should be right in front of you and not looking down so when you have a laptop on your lap is very wrong posture your eyes must be looking straight on to the computer if you are using a laptop you can keep a few books or a few pillows and keep your laptop on that so that you can see straight ahead you can also stand and work you have to make sure that your hands are on both both your hands are rested on the desk and you're not sitting far away definitely a no to sitting on the sofa sitting on a settee or sitting on a bed so backpacks again you know the backpack should be hugged tight towards the spine if the backpack is hanging down it will cause a lot of pull on your shoulder muscles when you're lifting never bend down as shown in the left hand side of your screen always on the right your knees and elbows um and your hips should be bent if you're lifting anything heavy always two people or use a trolley children go into 60% of children watching tv are in a wrong posture and 60% of children 54% of children carrying backpacks carry wrong this was a survey done in the us so the right way as i've just shown you before lying down in a mattress lying down in the chair all of these things you know we need to correct kids as they are doing and the motivation comes from the family the red flags are children below 20 should not develop back problems so if a child is continuously complaining of back pain take it serious children should not develop back pain there can be congenital problems there can be degeneration there can be various other problems in the spine um exercise in front of the computer you can do a lot of things encourage your kids to do that you know it may look funny but you can use your desk your chair and other props to do these exercises you know it's very difficult to engage children in doing exercise so here are some series of exercises you know bear walking you know crawl on your hands with toes and touching your knees so this puts a lot of stress and it releases a lot of pressure on the back doing simple exercises where you know side tilts so this strengthens your core muscles and it tightens your core muscles um skipping you know skipping is a very good exercise donkey kicks you know ask your kid to do kicks superhero you know ask him to like like a superhero and look up so that the back arches windmills you know ask the children to do these exercises every day so before you start your school spend 10 minutes just exactly 10 minutes and the only way to get it done is you do it with your kid you just ask your kid then you put a video or show these pictures he or she is definitely not going to do it but as if you do it with them they will definitely do it in the evening time because now we are locked down at home place cones or objects and ask them to zigzag ask them to jump and play to music or jumping jacks you know crawl backwards and crawl front um you know tree pose ask them to stand in this position as long as they can um you know the best posture is the namaz pose or the child pose where they totally relax their muscles you know on fag frog and squat so all of these things you know warrior pose ask them to stand in this position for 3 minutes 
uh, wheelbarrow walk, you know, ask them to do. So all these things are specifically meant for back strengthening. And if the spine is straight, they look very confident as the child grows. They look straight. They look straight ahead. You know, make some obstacles at home and ask them to jump around these obstacles. Um, and there are lots of myths. You know, what pillow should the child lie in, whether it should be a right pillow, soft, hard. It should be a hard pillow. Which position should they lie? They can lie in any position they want. There's no need for any specific position. Definitely no collars and belts for children. You know, to be active or rest, absolutely to be active. Rest is not a solution. If you take rest, your muscles get stiff, your joints get stiff, you lose your physical fitness. Whereas if you're active, your muscles are very active, your bones are, you know, they become strong. You have all the natural chemicals and you're happy. Tablets is not the solution for back problems. Surgery is not dangerous, but 99% of children never would require surgery. And if you're having a surgery for whatever reason, you can still go back to normal life. There are so many things that we can do for back problems, medicines, physiotherapy, gym, yoga, acupuncture. There's no right and wrong answer and meet your specialist who will guide you on that. 95% of problems are do not require surgery. And at study, avoid sitting or standing continuously, take break, breaks and de-stress, do simple exercises, take them out of the house, you know, get them to go to the car park, get them to go and play for some time um, and spend more time with family. So in summary, you know, it, it's really that you need to educate your children. The children need to know this, the reason why you're asking them to sit erect and why you're asking them to maintain a good posture because you just keep telling them, you know, sit straight, sit straight. They get really annoyed and, you know, my kids definitely get annoyed. Um, and, and so the only way to tell them is educate them, you know, why it's important to sit straight, how it looks good that, you know, they are sitting straight, they don't develop any back problems, they don't put on weight, they look smart and they look very healthy. So be active. Um, so thank you so much. Um, and we have an, a rehabilitation center as well, where we actually teach a lot of these children these certain exercises in Chennai. So if there's any questions, uh, we can sit down and we at Kaveri, we have a specialized team of neuro and orthopedic surgeons in spine and I head the team um, and we do a lot of procedures, interesting things. But really for children, 99% of children will not need surgery um, if, if they look after themselves. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank Dr. You, Dr. 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 Those were uh, really very insightful and uh, so friends, we are open to questions. Please don't hesitate to drop in a few questions on the chat box or on the Teams portal if you're on Teams. And Pavitra, could you just help me with publishing those questions? So I think uh, I'm just going to recapture a bit of what you said. It was heartening to know that 90% um, of those back pains are not going to be serious and do not require surgery. Though you said for the kids below 20 years, I guess uh, repetitive back pains is an indication of uh, you know going to the doctor and diagnosing what's in the problem there and I guess uh, I think it's all about modeling so it's very well said from I think it was from a parent's perspective so once you work out and you stretch in front of the computer the kids will follow so honestly I've had this issue so every time I tell my daughter or son sit up straight don't lean it just doesn't work so that nagging part I think is something that the kids definitely don't like so that was also I think highlighted well by you of course being active something very easy to say and very very difficult to follow but I guess children, especially these days, because they are at home completely, that is another challenge. So engaging them into activities at home is, is a, a serious challenge. So that's possible only if you know you have a good pet or you have a mom or a dad who's really hopping along with them. So that's, uh, uh, I mean, that's just my thought. So apart from that, I have a few questions on the survey. They may be repetitive, but I will ask it for the benefit of everybody. So Doc, what are the ramifications of a bad posture? I mean, of course, apart from back pain and neck pain that you've already explained, what are the other effects it can have on other systems? Um, I mean, with the bad posture, uh, one is, as I said, the spine uh, will give stress and can cause neck and back pain. But apart from this, the posture also makes you slouch. So, you're, you, you know, kids start having a pain in their abdomen because they are sitting, leaning forward so much. Um, and if the kids have, a, you know, a little belly, they also have a lot of stress on this. Um, eyesight can be affected. 
um, by sitting in the wrong posture and they're looking at the screen in the wrong way. Um, they also get very depressed and bored. Um, you know, if they're sitting in the wrong posture in the wrong way and working on the computer with the teacher on one side, the parents on one side, um, they start getting a lot of very stressful. And when you stress yourself up, all your muscles tense more. And when your muscles tense more, again, you go into a worsening posture. So I think it's just a vicious circle that, you know, when you're, when you're sitting all the time in a wrong posture, you develop so many problems. Okay. So uh, we spoke a lot about preventive measures. So someone has asked, how do you correct it? Suppose you have a kid who is always stooping or, you know, has got a slouch and how do you actually correct it? It's, I mean, you could give your ideas on rehabilitation for that. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, uh, as I said, as adults, you can educate them. You can show them videos. You can teach them how to sit direct. Um, but with kids, you know, you have to do it in a way that motivates them and they understand. Yes, kids also first thing is they need education. So you need to tell them why it is important that they sit straight. The second thing is um, the way to correct this is, you know, um, continuously keeping some kind of a reminder. You know, even adults, you know, when we are sitting for two hours, three hours working on a, a laptop, initially you probably will sit up straight. But by the end of two hours, you're going to slowly slouch and go back into a wrong position because that's how comfortable it is. To sit straight is actually an effort. To sit straight, you actually have to put a lot of muscles to work in your body. So uh, after some time, the muscles get um, tired and they sleep, they slouch. So it is okay to have a reminder like, you know, some people have reminders for drinking water, for tea breaks and things like so continuous reminders, continuously being aware. Okay, I'm slouching. I need to sit straight. I'm gone to the wrong position. I'm tilting like this. I need to sit straight. So that is the only way. The next thing is fitness. So it, it is like, you know, if you want to, you know, build muscles, you have to work out. You cannot, be, you know, build up you know, six packs by simply eating and sitting at home. Mm -hmm. You have to go to the gym and I have to work out to pull down six packs or uh, build muscle. Exactly the same way. The only way to do this is fitness, asking the ch children to be active and continuously reminding them and telling them to sit straight. I don't think there's any magic uh, treatment or anything that I or anybody can say as to what you need to do. OK, that, that's very true. <laughs> that's very true. It needs a lot of efforts there. So one parent has asked uh, this question. What is she says her kid is uh, on the overweight side. So will that be a reason for you know a bad posture? Will he get into postural problems? So can you highlight a little bit on obesity and posture? Yeah, yes, yes. yeah. So definitely obesity will lead to problems in the back. The reason is um, when we are standing straight, there is a center of gravity in our spine. So we all stand straight at a certain point in our body from the head to the pelvis and the pelvis connected to the legs. We all stand straight. So when we start putting on weight, especially the belly, so the, the center of gravity is shifted forwards. So when the center of gravity is shifted forwards, the body is constantly trying to pull backwards to maintain that center of gravity. That is why during pregnancy, when you start, you know, when the child starts growing bigger and bigger, you realize that, you know, towards your eighth or ninth month, you start developing some back problems. That's because the baby's weight is so much and you're constantly trying to spin backwards. Unfortunately, when you are obese and have a belly, it's a permanent pregnancy. So you're just going to be constantly fighting for this. So if you children do not lose weight and do not maintain their posture um, and if they do not do exercise and they are overweight, they are likely to have back problems in the future. Um, I have opted children as young as 12 years to 14 years developing disc problems. So there be no doubt that obesity has direct effects on the spine um, and it is weight. OK, uh, there is one question from Anish. He says he's got severe neck pain when he's attending classes continuously for three hours. So is there anything to do to particularly avoid this? Yeah, so uh, exercise, exercise, exercise. That's the only thing that you can do. Uh, we can teach you, um, you know, maybe you can share later. We can send some videos about what kind of exercises you need to do. Um, you, you, wherever you are, you can go to a local physiotherapist. They will teach you some exercises or you can go online. There are exercises. Kaveri Hospital also has some exercise on their website. So if you check these things and do them, 
definitely the neck pain will get better but yes. despite that despite doing those exercises and if you persistently have neck pain go see a doctor okay so that that is well said and i think also we've got regulations anish right now that we cannot hold continuous classes so take the liberty to you know walk away after 45 minutes you know take a small break and come back so that's a simple thing that my kids are doing uh, so thank you thank you for that and uh, doc for the benefit of the women of viewers here so can you just elaborate a little bit on post pregnancy back pain and how it affects your posture that be really useful yeah sure there is a very common uh, problem and a common question that i i deal with and see women following pregnancy but let me tell you some uh, truth that you really don't want to hear um a lot of women think that you know either the pregnancy is causing the back pain or you have an epidural injection for your delivery which causes back pain i tell you both of them are not true pregnancy will cause back pain during your pregnancy and within 3 months 95% of your back pain will get better once your muscles all come to normality your ligaments you know contract and they become normal you you your back pain will get better uh, epidural injection again is not a cause of back pain it's a tiny tiny needle it definitely does not cause back pain and don't go and complain to your obstetrician or your anesthetist saying that oh because of that it came the problem why you develop back pain most of them after pregnancy is because you're very busy looking after your baby you're very busy breastfeeding you're very busy pampering the child and you forget about yourself and you keep doing and you start putting on weight you have no time for exercise your child is keeping you awake in the night and you know you have no time for yourself you're depressed or something that you you know that baby is taking away all your time so so all these things are the reasons why women you know within the first year they develop back problems and if you don't take care of it at that point you never lose weight you continuously keep to have a few pounds of weight on you and that leads to back pain and then it's a vicious circle so uh, i think uh, you know pregnancy um back pain is normal it will get better within 3 to 6 months you can start doing exercises within a month or two you can whether it's a cesarean section or normal delivery based on your doctor's advice pelvic exercises fitness is very important no matter how busy you are and definitely pregnancy will not be a permanent cause for back pain and the other important thing is a lot of people are being told these days that if you are having back problem you should not get pregnant so i have people coming to me to say that doctor you know i've been having back pain from you know from 25 years of age and the gynecologist or obstetrician said not to get pregnant i think that's very silly um you know uh, uh, people who have back pain there's absolutely no contraindication not to get pregnant yes you may develop a little bit more pain during your pregnancy but that should not stop you from getting pregnant okay so there's a lot of things that we actually didn't want to hear so it's yeah. easier for us to blame the doctor saying it was a bad epidural or in fact uh, my pregnancy i didn't even take an epidural nor an analgesic thinking that this will all lead to back pain i wish i had heard a little more of this 7 8 years back so i guess again it all boils down to the fact that how much uh, we control our weight and how active we are especially women i think that's a very key factor here Uh, so we have one more question which is better to sit on hard surfaces or soft surfaces i think this is a very big dilemma hard bed soft bed so you should probably work that myth yeah well it it, see, it will always remain a myth um uh, because there are too many companies and uh, people who are making beds um and selling you know special beds and i don't want to put down their business um <laughs> let me tell you the truth the the truth is the bed surface Uh, that you lie on should be firm to hard it definitely should not be soft no water beds no soft beds um so your bed should be firm to hard you can depending on how much you can spend there are beds from about a few lakhs to a few thousands but important is to invest in a good bed and the other important thing is you know this this tradition in india that you keep your bed for about 20 years you you know it's like your either your father in law your mother gave you this bed is a lucky bed or whatever it is uh, people tend to keep their beds for 10 20 years and of course you are going to get back pain a bed should be changed they say every 6 to 7 years um and so whether you buy a hard bed or soft bed or whatever bed you are using 
every five to six years, change your bed because the beds do lose their you know texture. Uh, so definitely a hard to firm bed. Some people like lying on the floor. Uh, if you're used to lying on the floor, it's absolutely fine. But definitely you must use a pillow. Um, you know, without a pillow, you should not sleep because the neck has a curvature and that is why the pillow maintains the curvature. So uh, if somebody develops back pain, you know, people have this myth saying that don't use pillow, the back pain, neck pain will get better. Absolutely not. You must use a pillow. It should not be too big. It should be thin. OK, so the changing the bed is the key there. Yes. And yes. Someone has asked a question how to avoid stomach ache. I'm not sure what he means. Maybe posture, bad posture induced stomach ache. Is there a connection? Um, not really, no. Um, not really. I mean, if you're sitting for too long, probably it may cause, but no, it doesn't have any connection. Connection, okay. Digestion, doctor? Yeah, well, when you're sitting for too long and you're sitting in a wrong posture, you do develop some constipation, indigestion. So, you know, the only way to do that is, you know, in between work, they say that every half an hour, 45 minutes, you should get up and walk for five to 10 minutes. So follow that rule that 45 minutes, five minutes. So every 45 minutes you're sitting, get up and walk for five to 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. I think that's the government regulations also in online classes. They are like very clear. It's just a 45 minutes uh, uh, schedule there. Uh, with that, I think we don't have many questions. I think your presentation was itself quite elaborate and we had all the key points. So I am going to go in for uh, some conclusive remarks from my side. So Doc, if you have anything to conclude, please go ahead. Yeah, um, no, I, I think, you know, back and neck pain is uh, becoming a very serious problem. Um, let me take a few minutes to say why this problem is. Um, you know, when, when I was starting to train uh, at a younger age, um, the commonest group of people I used to see are people in their 40s, 50s and 60s. Um, but now I see more of people in their 20s and 30s, um, more people for an, you know, blue collared job, uh, people who are in IT, especially sitting in front of computers. Um, and uh, they are very underestimating the importance of uh, being active, um, having fitness and why you should sit properly, why you're going to sit um, um, less number of hours. If you actually take an uh, people who work on computers, if you calculate the number of hours that they sit in their lifetime, can you guess how many hours they sit in their lifetime? Uh, somebody who does a desktop job like an IT person in a lifespan of say 80 years, do you know roughly how long they sit? Take a guess. Probably three fourths of their life. <laughs> 40 years, about 35 to 40 years is the time they spend sitting. See, our body was not designed to sit. Our body was designed to be active. Our body was designed uh, to be working hard to hunt. And that is how we become from a quadrupedal. We became bipedal and standing straight uh, to be active. Um, whereas now we have, we have moved away from that and all our jobs are involving sitting. You know, whether it's an IT profession or a doctor or a desktop or a computer person, or an office job, all jobs are involved in sitting. So we are spending a lot of time sitting and so sitting. That is why the term sitting is equal to smoking. Okay. Uh, it is getting really bad to the extent that sitting for more than six hours a day for 20 years has a direct risk to heart attack, cancer, diabetes, obesity, depression, back problems. Um, so these are not just, you know, myths or stories. These are studies documented, published in the literature and uh, on large groups of people followed for 30, 40 years. And they found that people who are doing sitting jobs are at risk of all of these. So, but I'm not telling you that you have to quit now sitting and you know resign your job and go do something else. So there's no way everybody's going to sit more in the future. So the only way is spend more time playing, spend more time in activity, spend more time in exercise. And you know, people use gym membership as a prescription. Yeah, only when you develop diabetes or hypertension or obesity, you go to the gym. That should not be the way. It should be a part of your lifestyle. And, and you don't have to go to the gym or buy a membership. You can just walk, you can jog, you can, you know, if you have a, you know, find simple ways in which you can, you know, make yourself active, climbing stairs in your workplace two, three times a day, going for a walk, 
you know stop your uh, you know get down one or two bus stops before if you use a bus and walk one bus stop so so many ways you have to find your own way and if you don't do this at your younger age you are going to run into problems in your older age don't think that after 35 40 i will have all my time i'll settle down in life then i'll go to the gym then i'll become active you've lost it so if you don't do in school in teenage um in your early years of your life you are going to develop problems which are irreparable if your disc is degenerated if your joints in your spine are worn off no matter what you do how much money you have there is no solution there is you cannot if you have a knee joint problem you have a hip joint problem we can give you a new hip we can give you a new knee right now the spine you cannot change anything so the only way to do is to take care of your spine and it is in all in your hands and you have to do it and you have to understand the importance of this and only if you understand you're going to tell that to your kids so i think that the really the education is really for the moms and dads because if you follow it and if you are very strict about it obviously you will make sure your children because children it is very difficult for them to you know uh, maintain that posture because their spine is so flexible um and you know and they are very fidgety and they are very active that they cannot sleep but when they come to a teenage they just you know they they like the most comfortable positions you know they like to sit in their sofa in their bed in lying in all positions because they think oh you know my spine i'm i have they don't get pain so they very flexible they do all these things so um, so with that i really want to conclude by saying that you know uh, uh, to prevent back problems in future which is far ahead for some of you you have to do that right now so uh, don't think that after 50 you can do yoga and go to the gym and make yourself you have done all the damage in the in the young age which is irreparable when you get older thank you very much for the opportunity thank you thank you dr balmurli that was so well said and i think the mantra is to stay active and uh, very nicely said catch them early i think school childhood is a time when kids need to be trained on fitness and asked to be active so that continues for the rest of their lives and it's difficult to develop these habits in your 30s and 40s so very well said and with that i will move to a little bit of concluding remarks from my side Uh, so friends when we started online classes for my kids the first thing i ensured was to get a good workstation so that's worth that investment so from a parents perspective do invest in proper workstation that covers good ergonomics that's important because if that's not there then the kid is going to be sleeping on the bed or he's going to be on you know running around and watching the phone which is not good of course be very very mindful of the time no matter what the school regulations are take a break 3 hours at a stretch is a definite no 45 to 1 hour is the maximum that any standard kid can take up lessons on and of course this might be deviating from the topic but please do apply parental controls we've been talking a lot about cyber security and parental controls i recommend you to go back to youtube channel on schools guys we got a lot of material on what are the free parental controls that you could apply when your kids take up those online classes those can come in very very handy for the parents of course last but not the least be very reasonable be very firm get the rules in for the kids and allow them or ask them to follow the digital etiquette so they know what's right what's wrong on the net and how long they can actually stay how long they can play and how long they can actually study so these are the things that we need to kind of weave in together to have our kids having a great online journey because the pandemic has kind of opened up a lot of digital venues for all of us including parents teachers and the kids so with that i once again thank all of you for being here and spending your valuable time Uh, i'm sure you may have other questions as well so i would request you to uh, drop in your uh, questions to this mail id so you can drop in your questions on health to info@kaverihospital.com and in case you have any questions on the digital front don't hesitate to write to school support at schoolskies.com or you can just call us at 9940211195 so we'd be more than happy to take up your questions or address your health queries as well so i once again thank all of you for joining us and spending your time with us today and a special thanks to dr g baramurli so friends stay positive stay active walk up tall and keep going and my best wishes to all of you have a great evening bye bye thank you